Okay, hope everybody's doing well. Um, last time we began talking about time series and we uh, just got through a basic introduction to what time series are. We talked about a relationship uh, between y, which is the variable we care about, and t, which is time. Um, yeah, so again, what we're talking about is the same unit of observation, which is to say the same company or the same person or the same the same observation, right? We're looking at the same thing. We're looking at it over and over and over and over again. Okay, so what we'd like to do is uh, we'd like to be able to m make predictions. We want to make predictions, and we want to say something about how good those predictions are. And so one of the things we're going to talk about first is a few simple ways of making predictions and then a few ways of uh, so forecasting methods, very simple ones, and then ways of measuring forecast accuracy. And that's where we're going to start. So let's use the following data set as a working example. Let's see. Um, let me see, what do we have here? Let's say we have six weeks and we have observed values. They look like this. All right, let me put pull these into Excel actually and then uh, we'll take a look at them in there. Okay. Um, so I think I want to transpose these. We'll get a time series thing going on up here. All right, we'll do a time series plot of these just to take a look. Pretty simple. It's just a value. We have six values that we're taking a look at. Um, and what we want to do is we'll, we want to forecast from each point the next point. That's what we want to try to do, right? We want to try to predict the future. Okay, so let's take a look. Let me see if I can give you guys a sp some split screen stuff going on in here. All right, so delete this. One of the simplest ways to make predictions is using is using what's called a naive. Use the two dots. It's an umlaut. Naive forecast. And a naive forecast. Uh, oh, before I get to that, sorry. Let me just define. Okay, when we say forecast accuracy, what do we mean? Well, we're going to define forecast error. Do this first forecast error as the actual value minus the forecast. Right? Very simple, just how far we're off. Okay, now the simplest forecast we can use is what's called naive forecasting. What's naive forecasting? Well, what we do is we just say whatever happened last period, that's what I think will happen next period. Okay, so. Um, the way we denote this is that our forecast for t period t plus 1, so t plus 1, equals the outcome, which is y, for period t. Okay, so let's do this up. Let's see. So our naive forecast, we don't have any forecast for week 1, but our forecast for week 2 is just going to be what happened for week 1. Our forecast for week 3 is what happened for week 2, and so on and so forth. And we can call this, well, we already called it naive. We can add this to here. We'll add a, add a series. The series name is this. The x values are here. And the y values are here. Uh, no, I did that slightly wrong. Let me fix that. There we go. Uh, should we see two a two? Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. So this is what it looks like when we get the when we get our time series plot up. Good, right there. Does this do a very good job? Not very good. We're always undershooting or overshooting, right? Okay. Well, so we think this might do not such a great job. Using a naive forecast might not do such a great job. But how can we quantify that? Well, one way to talk about it is by calculating what's called uh, the mean absolute 
error. I'll abbreviate this as MAE. So, what's the MAE? Well, roughly in English, it's going to be the sum of the absolute value of the forecast errors over the number of forecasts. Easy enough. So how many forecasts did we make? We take the absolute value of each forecast error and we add them all together. Uh, in a little bit more mathematical jargon or notation at least, it's the sum over t, so across all the times we have, of actual t, the actual t minus forecast t. That's the absolute value there over t. So how many periods did we predict? Uh, so what does that look like? Well, let's calculate our mean absolute error for our, our example. Okay, so here we have our forecasts. And we have our... Oh, move this over here. Calculate our forecast error. This is going to be our, our um, observed value minus our forecast, if you recall. Copy and paste this all the way down. And we have our absolute forecast error. That's going to be the absolute value of whatever this is. Just to, we don't want to have the bad, you know, we don't want to have our under forecasts offsetting our over forecasts. Okay, now what we want to do is uh, the sum is over here. And we take the average, divide that by how many we had. This is going to be the average of these for absolute forecast errors. 4.4 is our mean absolute error. What does that mean? Well, it means on average we were off by 4 units. Is that a lot? Well, it's kind of hard to know how to make use of that. Um, in addition, we might care more about uh, being off by more, right? We want, might want not care about having a lot of small errors, but we might want to avoid very large errors. In any case, MAE tells you something. It's something of use. Um, another measure of uh, accuracy, forecast accuracy, is called the uh, mean square error. It's, it's not uncommon in stat, as I'm sure you've noticed, to use this approach. So the mean square error here is going to be the sum, and I'm going to switch back to my y, t, and f, t, the sum of my actual observed value for period t minus my forecasted value for t squared, and then uh, the average of that. So that's just divided by the number of forecasts, which I called t up here. That might not exactly be accurate depending on how many forecasts you have. Um, in any case, that's your MS, MSE, is your mean square error there. And that's one other approach. Um, I'm going to show you what the output is for that, but first I'm going to show you one other uh, approach. Um, another way to do this, one of the, both the mean square error and the uh, mean absolute error depend on the scale. These are scale-dependent measures, which means that you, you can compare different forecasting methods um, with the same exact data, but it makes them really hard to compare across different measurement periods um, because the measurement periods affect the data. So you can't use weekly versus monthly um, and make comparisons. One thing that makes that makes it better, though, is uh, what's called the mean absolute percentage error. And this is uh, M-A-P-E. So what's the MAPE? Well, what we do then is we take uh, a percentage error. So this is our, for our forecast error was YT minus FT. And we divide that by YT. Okay, that's our percentage error. And then we take the absolute value of that. All right, the 
absolute value of that, so the absolute percentage error. That's yt minus ft over yt, the absolute value of that. And then we divide, and then in order to get the, the mean absolute percentage error, we do is we sum this up. And we divide it by the number of forecasts again. Right. Each of our forecasts has, a, has an absolute percentage error. We want to know is, on average, how far off is each one. Okay. So let's see. Let's go back to our um, predictions. So, and now we're going to do mean square error first. Our square error here is going to be the forecast error squared. Uh, we can get the sum again. And here we have our average is going to be our mean square error. And our MSE is 20.8. We're going to do one other, uh, one other forecasting method, and then, then that'll show us a little bit more about whether this is a good prediction approach or not. Okay, so that's our square error, um, and that's our MSE. Let's do percentage error, last but not least. Percentage error. This is going to be, our, remember, this is our forecast error divided by our value. So that first one is negative 5 divided by negative 13. Uh, we can make this a percentage if we want. Copy those down. And we have our, our absolute percentage error, which is just the absolute value of this. And then to get the, we can get the MAPE, I mean absolute percentage error, is just going to be the average of this. Okay, so we have for our naive method, we have an MAE, an MSE, and an MAPE. Our naive approach gave us 4.4, 20.8, and 31.88%. Okay, let's talk about one other approach to, uh, to forecasting. One thing we can do, another approach to forecasting, is to uh, let me insert a bunch of. I'm just going to push all this stuff to the right. We can create a new kind of forecast. This is going to be called the average of past values. So, what's the average of past values? Well, the average of past values is another type of forecast, and it is what it says it is, right? So you start with period one, and you don't have a forecast for period one, but your forecast for period two is going to be your observed for period one. Your forecast for period three is the sum from t equals one, two, three, or of two, right? Two of um, these, yt, divided by two. It's going to be the average. In general, your forecast for period t plus 1 is going to be the sum from t equals 1 to t right, to the current period. So you have the current period, you're trying to predict the next period. What we're going to do is we're going to add up all of the ones that have happened and divide them by how many periods there are. Let me show you what this looks like in Excel so you can see it. Um, our forecast for period 2 what we do is we take the average of from period one. I'll press F4. That makes that absolute. Um, try that again. Press F4 here. That one's going to be absolute. So when I copy and paste it, that won't change. So that's just going to be the average of one of these. But this is the average of those two, right? You can see up here. I'm averaging these both of these together. If I copy down, this now is the average of those three, the average of the previous four, and the average of all five. Okay, so that's another approach to uh, forecasting. We can take a look on here by adding that data to see what, uh, what that looks like. Mm, let's add another one. Let's see, the name is average of past values. The x's are here, and the y's are here. Did that work? 
Let's see. Yes, that worked. Okay. And you can see how this works. It's just kind of like an average of everything that's happened before. Eventually, this turns into kind of a... You can see that each uh, additional um, value ha is going to have less and less effect, right? So the first period matters a lot. The second period only... Ha you know, the, for the prediction of the third period, the second period only matters 50% of that, and so on and so forth, until what you end up is kind of having a horizontal line that's just, you know, if you don't have too much fluctuation, it, it kind of levels out. So let's measure the forecast error. Uh, the forecast there again is our uh, observed value minus our um, our prediction, our forecast. And you can see that we have these forecast errors. We're going to get the MAE first. Um, to do that, we need to take these absolute values, copy them all the way down, and then our, our MAE for average of past values. I'm just going to put it here instead so we can compare it is going to be the average of these. Okay, so our MAE is lower. Our mean absolute error is lower. Let's look at square error. Uh, square error. We have to square our forecast error. And now for this, we're going to take the average of these. Again, much lower. And then let's do our percentage error and our, our, to get our absolute percentage error. I want the average again. Average. And here we go. You can see that on all three measures, uh, the average of past values in this case does a better job than naive. That's partly because the naive, I mean, this data is going down and up and then down and up, and our naive forecasts are doing a very bad job of accounting for that. Um, the average of past values works pretty well for stationary data, right? So if it stays kind of bouncing around a trend, um, the average, or uh, not a trend, but a, a fixed level, the average of past values will do a good job. But if you have discontinuous shifts or if you have an underlying regular trend, um, we can do better with, uh, with better forecasting methods. Um, but th these three, so the MAE, the mean absolute error, the mean square error, and the mean absolute percentage error are three measures that we can use to try to compare uh, two different forecasting approaches. Um, and you can see that, you know, they're, they, they measure different things, right? Uh, mean square error is going to put more weight, and you can see that in here. It puts more weight on the, the two cases where we have a big error, and it puts very little weight on a on small error. Absolute error doesn't matter, care that much which direction, uh, or uh, the whether you have the occasional spike and otherwise are a very, de do a very decent job, or if you're always off by a little. Um, so absolute error measures something a little bit different. Um, and then both of these uh, approaches to forecast error depend on the scale of the data. The mean absolute percentage error does not depend on the scale of the data nearly so much, which means that it, it doesn't matter how many, uh, nearly so much how many, or what pe how periodic the data is. All right, so those are some forecast error uh, evaluation methods. Next time we're going to talk about uh, more forecasting methods. These clearly are two very basic ones, but we're going to talk about um, some more complicated ways to try to try to smooth the data to forecast the data if we have uh, some other stuff going on. So I look forward to that. And if you have any questions, shoot me an email at jjdelaney at or leave me a comment. I'll be in touch. Thanks, guys. Bye.